Hi, this is Pastor Michael Foster of the historical First African Baptist Church here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We're better known as the Fab Church. I'm praying that you enjoy this sermon that you're about to hear. I pray that it'll be life-forming and life-changing, and that it will meet you just where you are. My prayer is that the Lord will just touch you, and prayerfully this sermon will help lift your spirits and get you to the next level where the Lord will have you. God bless you, and enjoy. Let's look at this text today as Jesus is, is... Starting off in his ministry, starting out, he's, he's just getting started. He knows what his purpose is. He knows what the Lord, what God has, would have for him to do. He's sitting out on his journey. And, and I want to um, skip over just a few things of him setting out according to Mark, get to verse 21. And verse 21 says it so clearly. It talks about this unclean spirit is rebuked. Um, And verse 21 says, and they went into Capernaum. This is they meaning Jesus and his just picked disciples, in particular Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Jesus has just picked them. Uh, and And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. Notice what the text says Jesus does. He goes into the synagogues and to the church, and he teaches. 22, and they were astonished at his doctrine, and for for he taught them as one had authority and not as a scribe. One has authority, not as a scribe. It's a difference between someone quoting scriptures and someone teaching and preaching. And I want us to be able to understand and see what happens when real preaching and teaching is done, we'll see what happens. Quoting scriptures don't make a difference in people's lives. Real preaching and teaching makes a difference. It says he, they were astonished at how he taught with both authority and not as the scribes. And there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and cried out, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who, art, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold your peace and come out of him. Some come to her, says, Jesus says, Be quiet and come out of him. It may have translation. Jesus says, shut up and come out of this man. That's the main thing that we need to get from. 26 says, and when the unclean spirit had torn him, he cried with a loud voice and came out of him. Had to, Jesus told him to. 27 says, and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves. There's always talking amongst themselves after Jesus makes a move, saying, what? thing is this what thing is this this new doctrine is this what new doctrine is this this new thing this new doctrine for with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they do obey him real preaching and teaching makes a difference in folks lives Verse 28 in the verse of reference today that I want everybody to get. 28 says, and immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the the region around Galilee. And immediately his fame spread all about the regions in Galilee. That's enough. You may be seated. His fame spread. All about the region of Galilee. I want to talk this morning from the subject of don't get fame confused with ministry. Don't get fame confused with ministry. It's really not about what you do. It's about when you do it. It's not about how much you do. It's about how effective you are when you do it. 
Beloved, I'm going to say by way of introduction today, when you do real ministry, you will have to deal with some evil, unclean, demonic spirits. When you're doing real ministry, you're going to come in contact with some real, low-down, demonic, evil spirits, not because of who you are, but because of whose you are. I think we need to understand today that fame gets along with everybody, but Christ's ministry, the gospel of Jesus Christ, forces you to rebuke evil spirits because God has given us the power and the authority to. See how quiet you get right there. I think I need to let you know that today in church, that if you're living a life as a Christian and you don't believe in demonic, satanic spirits, then this morning, this is a wake-up call. Because every spirit that you're going to encounter is not some spirit that's going to encourage you. Some spirits comes to destroy you. You see it here in this text today. I want to remind us again that if you're going to be in, do real ministry, you've got to learn how to rebuke evil spirits. If you want to be famous, if you want to be the, 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 the it crowd, the it church, I want to remind you that if you want everybody to be for you and everybody to like you, don't get in ministry. Because in ministry... Some things are not to be patty cake and put together. Sometimes you have to tell people the truth even when they don't want to hear it. I knew it was going to be quiet this morning. See, 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 itching ears and, 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 and this doctrine of everything is going to be all right is not true gospel. Because many of us can testify today that, that that's not true gospel. Even the family that's here today can testify things happen. And, and you've got to have a religion. You've got to have a gospel. You've got to have a belief in somebody that's greater than the problems that you face. You've got to trust in Jesus even when it's not easy. You've got to have a faith that functions in tough times. And the only faith that functions in tough times is hearing the word of God from Jesus Christ. See, with fame, you'll get a pat on the back. But in ministry, you'll get pierced in your side. Because ministry is more than just trying to be liked by people. God will put you to the test just to see who do you love the most. Come here, Abraham. Take Isaac up on Mount Moriah. And when you get him up there, I want you to be able to sacrifice Isaac. God just wanted to know, Abraham, if you're going to be the father of many nations, I can't have someone being the father of many nations and the father of the faith who don't really trust and believe in God. And the larger your test, the larger God will elevate you. Abraham had cried with he and Sarah, had gotten old, and God gave him the son, Isaac, and God gives him the son after all this time, all these years, he gets the son, and then God said, now take him up there and sacrifice him. The test is, God wants to see that when he gives you something, can he trust that thing to not be more important than him? Y'all not going to talk back to me this morning. Even his only begotten son, Isaac, he holds his hand back, raises his hand to take off the head of his only begotten son, according to the Bible, but we know that's not his only son. He's about to remove the head of Isaac, and God said, Abraham, stay your hand. Abraham freezes because he's sensitized to God's spirit. He stops. God says this in so, so, many, un, so many terms. God says these words. You don't have to do it because now I see what you are willing to do. Love it. I want to tell you something today. When you trust God, 
That's not the type of teaching that you receive sometimes because you think when you trust God that you don't have to worry about those things. That's just the devil. But what do you do when the devil is not giving you the test? It's the Lord giving it to you. Who do you get upset with when God is the one that tells you to sacrifice your only begotten son? Who do you run to? Who do you text the call when the author and the finisher of your faith is the one that's testing your faith? That's Abraham's story. What's your story today? Do, do you want to be famous or do you want to do ministry? I, I trust do this. I trust do that. It's really not about what you do. It's, it's about getting your hands dirty. It's really not about throwing money at folks. It's about smelling like weed because you've hugged children that's been smoking all day. You don't want this kind of preaching, do you? It's really about smelling like a little alcohol because you've hung around some folks and encouraged them, hugged on them, loved them, told them that God loves you just as much as it. You got to be able to smell like sheep every once in a while because you've hung around sheep and you're trying to help somebody get closer to God. See how quiet it is right here, right now? That's because we want to be famous and we don't want to really do ministry. Because ministry gets your hands dirty. Ministry mess up your little white dress that you wear on Sundays. Ministry gets blood on the black suits and the red ties that we wear on Sundays. Ministry gets you out of the church and places you in the community. Do you want to be famous or do you want to do ministry? I, I'm a, I, want to, I want to say something to us this morning. Being famous or not helping the children in our community. Doing ministry helps the children, helps the people in our community because they get to see us with our elbows touching together, working together, not throwing money at a problem, but do you want to do ministry or do you want to be famous? As we zoom into the circumference of this text, we see something very interesting and intriguing. Because when we look at it, Jesus has been baptized by John. That has been the Holy Spirit has hovered over Jesus Christ as he's in this water being baptized. And this spirit hovers over him like a dove and he hears a voice from heaven saying, because you are obedient to what I said, Je Jesus hears this voice that says, now this is my son, my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. God is pleased with Jesus, not because it's just his son. The secondary reason is because Jesus is obedient to what God says. If you want to be a good Christian, if you want to get closer to God, be obedient to what God says. Amen. Jesus is baptized. He then leaves from the baptism. After receiving the baptism, the Holy Spirit hovers over him. He leaves there and he then goes to choose his disciples. He gets to looking around, not in the church. Jesus ain't got time to deprogram church people. And so since he can't deprogram church people, he did not go to the synagogue looking for his staff. He goes to the people that are out in the marketplace, out fishing, out doing other things. He goes to them because it's easier to teach someone Jesus Christ's gospel than it is to deprogram somebody of what they think they already know. Jesus leaves there from picking his disciples in the first place Jesus goes to with his disciple for discipleship training he goes to the church Jesus gets to the church he's teaching the people that are in the synagogue along with his disciple what thus says the Lord and when you get to teach people what thus says the Lord and when real preaching real teaching take place that's when lives are changed Not what I think the text is saying. Not, not, we're just not talking about what, what, what's your opinion about a text. What does Jesus Christ really mean when he says this? Because my opinion don't matter. What you think don't matter. What really matters is what is the interpretation that Jesus is putting out there so that we can get the true interpretation and not just what someone thinks. Not just someone's opinion, because what someone thinks of someone's opinion is what has gotten us in trouble in the first place. You saw what someone's opinion and what they thought got those people 
that had walked away from Jesus at the feeding of the 5,000. They misinterpreted what Jesus says. They think cannibalism. Jesus is trying to tell them, if you drink of my blood and eat of my flesh, someone misinterpreted that text. And thousands upon thousands walked away from Jesus Christ all because someone didn't understand what Jesus really meant. I want us to know today that fame refuses to put Satan in its place. Fame refuses to have Satan upset and mad. And that's the reason why we suffer sometimes in our home. That's why we suffer sometimes in the marriage. The children are suffering. Schools are suffering. Communities are suffering. Because we have the power and the authority. But we refuse to put Satan in his place. Because we're too busy trying to be free. You can't be friends with your son and he got a gun in that back room and you know it. I know you're going to see, we don't want to be real. You can't be friends with that daughter. She's going out and she got a boyfriend this week, the next week, and the week after. You can't be friends with her. Somebody got to stop trying to be friends and start talking about Jesus. Satan has taken over the house. Satan has taken over the schools, the community, and he's almost trying to take over the church. But when truth to power is being spoken, when the word of God is being preached and teached, it's impossible for Satan to stay in that place. Watch what, watch what we learn here now about this text. Let's see what helpful hints this little text has for us. Jesus just sat out on his journey. He's Headed out, picked his disciples, just been baptized. Holy Spirit hovers over like a dove. He leaves there. He goes down to the synagogue, which means the church. He goes in. He starts to teach it. And that's a good thing to do. Jesus started preaching and teaching. And once he started preaching and teaching, we found out something about his preaching and teaching. Let's see what this, this, this evil spirit, this unclean spirit shows us. Number one, this unclean spirit teaches us this. That evil spirits do attend church. Evil spirits, look at verse 23. Evil spirits do, do attend church. They come to church. It's right there in verse 23. You see it so clearly. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. He has an evil spirit and he cried out. Wait a minute. This man is crying out. Jesus didn't call him out. Jesus didn't say his name. He didn't prophesy to him. He didn't have no oil. He didn't, it wasn't a, a crucifix. It was a, a exorcism or nothing. Jesus just teaching the word and while Jesus is teaching and preaching the word, this man cries out. As my granddaddy said, a hit dog will show holler. <laughs> Watch the text. It's in there. You read it right there. Verse 23. I'm not tampering with the text. It's right there. Jesus didn't say, hey, you got a devil. Hey, you got a... No, Jesus didn't say the preaching and teaching of the gospel exposes the devil. And the devil just start talking. <laughs> what you go, what you, you trying to get rid of, what, what you, it's amazing how powerful the word of God is. But if you don't know the word of God like I'm preaching it, you will think teaching and preaching is just something we do on Sunday and Tuesday nights. No, preaching and teaching changes the lives of people when it's done correctly. Never underestimate or devalue preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord have mercy. Before you go looking for evil spirits out there, wait a minute, don't leave too quick. Don't look around, look straight ahead. Don't, don't leave too quick because evil spirits are even in the church. Where do you get that from, Pastor? Right there in verse 23. Evil spirits came to church. And my grandmama used to say, if they can't get in you, they'll get on you. They'll ride you to church. Lord have mercy. Evil spirits can land anywhere and on anybody or in anybody if you open the door to it. And some of us need to start waking up a little bit because some of the stuff you're dealing with on your job is a spirit. Some of the stuff that's coming up in our children is a spirit. Some of the stuff that we are dealing with in the world is a spirit. And if you don't recognize it's a spirit, you'll get caught up because you don't believe in something that's real. I don't believe in the devil. Okay. Okay. 
I, I don't believe in spirits like that. I, okay. You ain't got to believe in it, but let me tell you something this morning. It's real. Just like Jesus Christ is real, there's an opposition that is in opposition against Jesus Christ that's trying to tear down Jesus Christ, try to tear your life up. Satan come but to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, right, look at this text today. Evil spirit does attend church because one of the abilities of Satan is to hide in sacred places. He's a chameleon. He... He can be over here, and don't you fool yourself, Satan can talk Bible. I didn't say he could preach to the teacher, he can talk Bible. He can talk it because he was there with Jesus Christ. He was up in heaven, he was up there singing so melodiously, his voice was so great, he can articulate and sing, but guess what? Singing and all those things that Satan tried to pull us away, that has nothing to do with preaching and teaching the gospel. They do come to church. You know, there was another one. The biggest devil that's known to humanity was Judas Iscariot. He prayed with Jesus. He walked with Jesus. Jesus even gave him a promotion and made him over the money. And what the worst thing you can do with a crook is put him over money. And one of the things Jesus te was teaching us about putting Judas over the money is Jesus is teaching us, I chose him. And I guess Jesus was simply saying, keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. Yeah. Jesus told him and chose him in order to keep him under Jesus' thumb. Because Jesus had the power to do it. And when time for the Lord Jesus Christ, when he said the hour will come if it's not when, that's when the devil, Satan, start to move. But that's also when Judas went out and sold him short. Lord, what do we do today? But we don't understand that there's this demonic things are happening to us and happening all around us. But we refuse to accept the fact that there are demonic spirits and Jesus is teaching us this lesson why is this part of the Bible here so that we may learn that, that that things that are in opposition of Jesus Christ just don't exist on booger man shows and, and and horror films no demonic spirits are in our lives today and we have to accept the fact that Jesus Christ has our power over them as he has taught us but he wants us to know they're still here have you ever told somebody, man, this ain't like you. What's wrong with you? you? I hear people right here all the time, I've lost all respect for that. You, you, you've got to understand, what exposes evil in humanity is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can suppress it, you can hide it. But when the gospel is being preached, when the word of God is going forth, the word of God pull evil and evil will start to raise his head and talk because evil realizes that it's in the, in the, in the possession, being belonging to, and under the influence of an almighty God. Before we give this unclean spirit, this evil spirit credit, because I know how we want to do, we'll be Christians. We we'll want to give folks credit. Well, well, at least he came to church. <laughs> you know how we are, because we don't want to call things the way they are. You know, we 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 we'll see a snake and put it in our bosom. Then when we get bit, we'll try to explain how we tried to help. And we, well, at least they came to church. Listen, when evil spirits come to church, the reason that they are there is not for the reason you and I are here. Evil spirits come. Watch this. The only purpose. They come to get in somebody else. Well, 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 why don't they get in the folks out in the world, out in the streets? They're already in them. They want to get in us while we're under the protection of God. Why does this evil spirit come to the church? It's real simple. Because it wants to influence someone else to go the way they're going. Oh, not, only, not, only, not only that, evil spirit attend church, but I see something else. Number two, evil spirits are opposed to change. Let's see right here, verse 24 and 25, if the text releases this type of teaching. Verse 24 and 25, we learn something from this, this evil spirit. Number one, 
it's, it's the first thing we learn from the Holy Spirit is he, he says, let us alone. Hmm. He says, second thing he says, uh, what have we to do with you? That next thing he says is, did you come to destroy us? That's, that's, that, that's the type of, that, that, that's something that suggests to me that a, a, this is A, it suggests to me, A, there is more than one unclean spirit in this man. That's the first thing it suggests. Don't you see that in the text? We, us, he's, there's more than, A, there's more than, one, uh, there's more than one unclean spirit, and B, this is the B, the spirit has overtaken this man to the point that now the spirit is speaking for the both of them, and the spirit said, why are you bothering us? Wow, that, that, that means when the evil spirit overwhelms you, you cannot control the evil spirit that's in you. The only way you can speak your truth is that the Holy Spirit has to be on the inside of you because when the evil spirit is in you, the evil spirit will speak for you. I don't know why I'm doing this. You better pray I don't know why I cussed that lady. You better pray. Yeah. I don't know why I slapped that. You better pray. I don't know why I was thinking about killing it. You better pray. Because that spirit is not of God. And perhaps something has got inside of you that has started making you start to think like the people of the world. He says this words to us. He says, let us alone. This is what he said. Let us alone, which means, which means now... This man has, has to understand. They say, we don't want to change. Let us alone. This man wants to change. No doubt in my mind, he wants to change. But he can't speak for himself because he's overwhelmed with an evil spirit. Yeah. So now the spirit speaks for him. Let us alone. Lord, what do you do? When you can't even speak for yourself, this evil spirit speaks for you. For them, he said, let us, but there's something else he said. What have we to do with you? Meaning, as long as I'm not personally bothering you, Jesus, why are you concerned? Jesus says, look, when you bothering them, you are bothering me. Lord, I wish y'all could hear this that way I'm trying to preach it. You, you, you are bothering me. The evil spirits don't understand that when you touch a child of God, you touching God. When you're touching God's anointed, you are touching God. And there's some anointed people in this church that the enemy is trying to destroy. But God won't let it be because God's anointed can't be hurt by the hands of Satan. <laughs> Says, what have we to do with you? Why do you care? This man is asking Jesus. Because a little evil soon spreads all over the synagogue. Yeah. Well, it's just like, a, just like someone said, I'm just a little pregnant. No. <laughs> you, you can't be a little pregnant. Either you're pregnant or you're not. Well, well that, it's just a little evil. No. Because anybody knows something about cancer, once evil or once cancer comes in, it won't be long before cancer takes over the whole thing. I'm so glad that cancer, this cancer of sin, this cancer of the evil spirit is trying to take over. But the good thing about this text is today that this man is in church and Jesus shows up. He starts to preach and teach. This evil spirit speaks up even when the man came. There's something miraculous happens when you're in the vicinity of Jesus Christ. It's impossible to come in contact with Jesus and your situation remains the same. Now you can return back to it if you want to, but Jesus will free anything that's trying to hold you down and keep you bound. You can get off drugs. You can stop being promiscuous. You can come to, if you come in contact with Jesus, he has the power to change it. Something else this, this evil spirit says, did you come to destroy us? It's something about evil spirits. They want to know ahead of time so they'll know what to do about it. They, did you, now, let me ask you a question, Jesus. You know, did, did you come to destroy us? Because I have a plan 
for if you're trying to destroy us, I need to, I need to know before I even do what I'm finna do because if you just come to get at us, then I'm gonna hold my, I'm gonna put this in my back, I'll use it later. So Jesus, tell me your plan so I'll know what to do. Did you come to destroy us? Look, listen to what he said. Did you come to destroy us? Did you come to change our sneakiness, our two-facedness, our jealousy, our insecurity, our selfishness, our heart? Because if you come to change that, something got to happen. I don't, we don't want to change that. The evil spirit don't want Jesus to change that. Talk back to me if you can. I'm just preaching the Bible now. That evil spirits don't want that to change. They want that to remain the same. So did you come to, did you come to, to change us, to, to, to destroy us? And always evil spirits want to just keep doing what it wants to do because when it has victory over our lives in the area, evil spirits don't want to move from that area. C come here, come here uh, 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 down, uh, 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 um, come here uh, down with, with the pigs that have come from this man with an unclean spirit and Jesus Christ speaks to him. And this unclean spirit is there. And the pigs that are, um, are, are next to this unclean spirit of, of this man who has this unclean spirit. And Jesus has spoken to these spirits. They come out. And the spirits say, um, um, Jesus, if you bade us to come out, let us go into another living thing so that we can continue to live. And Jesus says, okay, I'll board you. I'll get you come out. Go into those swines over there. And that spirit came out of one living person's body and goes into a, 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 some living swine. And Jesus said, that's the whole plan I wanted anyway. And when they went into the swine, Jesus made the swine walk over the cliff, fall in the ocean, and they died there. And the evil spirit says, let us remain in this area because we have worn here before. Don't send us somewhere else and we got to start all over again. If you let me hang around here, I can win some more souls for Satan. But God said, I'm going to let you stay around here, get in them swines. And they went into the pigs, went off the side of the, off a cliff into the ocean. And when the pigs died, there was no living, living thing for the spirits to go into. Beloved, as your pastor, I'm going to warn you, don't you let anybody that you don't know because you're visiting somewhere else, put their hands on you and pray for them unless you really know who they are. Because some people pray for you and some people pray on you. God will lead you into who he wants to put his hand, who he wants them to put his God, God's spirit will speak to your spirit and it will be confirmed. But you don't know if someone is transferring their spirit on to you or yours by country. You don't know what's going on. You better be aware that there are some evil spirits. Watch this. Evil people that are out there. And you better know what you are doing when you are dealing with spirits. Everybody that has a bottle of oil don't really know the Lord. I don't know why my child is acting like this. Who did you have put, your, put their hands on him or her and pray for her? I don't know where this boy get this from. He wasn't raised like this. Who of you he's hanging around? The spirit that's not like God's spirit. And that spirit has picked up and got inside of them. And now they're acting just like the people they're hanging around. Wasn't because you didn't raise them right. It's because, and not because they're so good or they're so perfect. It's because some spirits are connecting with people that don't, you thought that they were better than that, but spirits overwhelmed them and we just read, spirits will start to speak for them. Lord have mercy. I've got to leave you alone here because the fourth thing he says is, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Did you get that? The spirit even know who Jesus is even when we don't. Spirits, I know who you are. You're the holy one. And some of us sat here all morning long and we have not said hallelujah, thank you Jesus, amen. And the evil spirit is speaking for you. He won't even let you say glory be to God because you no longer speak for yourself. Spirit will speak for you. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. You can't say nothing because spirits say shut up. And you say, spirit say walk out. You get up and walk. See, you don't understand the power that the spirit has over us, but Jesus Christ has all power. When we submit to God, God has the power to change the life of humanity. All right. 
This is a good verse right here. Verse 25 says, Jesus rebuked him and said, be quiet. Come out of him. Jesus does not let evil spirits take over the church. Be quiet. Wait a minute. He's telling the truth. Jesus, he's telling the truth. He said, you are the son of, he said, you are the Messiah. You are the master. He says, I know who you are. You are the holy one. Jesus says, shut up. Because I don't want an evil thing pronouncing my rival. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now. Wait, hold, hold, hold. wait, wait, wait. Hold. So wait a minute, Jesus. Even if the evil thing is telling the truth, Jesus says no evil can ever be truthful even if they told the truth. Now, now Jesus' brother said a double-minded man is unstable in some of his ways. Somebody been reading the Bible. <laughs> that just because a, bro a broken clock is right this time, that don't make the broken clock fixed. And Jesus is trying to teach us. Why would he? Well, Paul said the same thing with that lady who was a soothsayer, who was making much money off. And when Paul got there, she said, Paul, the man of God, I know that these are. And Paul prayed. And when Paul prayed, she couldn't do the things she used to do to make money for her masters in the book of Acts. And Paul struck her. She wasn't able to do it no more. She was telling the truth. But Paul says, no wicked person is able to tell the truth and will not pronounce my coming because I don't want G my coming to be pronounced by something evil. What does that mean? If I let this evil spirit speak in the synagogue, Jesus saying, then folks will hear him saying the truth and they'll start believing him rather than the real and living God. Wait a minute, what are you saying, Jesus? If I let it go on, it's my fault when someone else believes it rather than the gospel. And immediately Jesus stomps it out right there and says, shut up, be quiet. Not only that, come out of him. This evil spirit, now he's, he's, remember, Jesus, there's, there's not no prophecy. This ain't no, God told me to tell you. He ain't pointing out nothing. This is no exorcism. This evil spirit starts to speak. Why? Because Jesus Christ was teaching and preaching the gospel. Didn't say, come up, get in the line. And start praying over the man, speaking in tongues, and the man started to say, Spirit started coming. He was foaming at the mouth. No, Jesus preaching and teaching the word. And when he's preaching and teaching the word, evil spirit jumped up and wanted to talk. That's what did it. Let me, let, me re let me make you rethink again. Don't think that evil spirits come out. Just because someone got all a prophesying or exorcism. Or, no, the word of God is just that powerful. If it's preached in its purest form, in its authentic form, if it's preached and teach, you see it in the hill. You'll see, you'll see how, how, how devils are trying to come. It's because the word of God is so powerful. If your life is to change, it's got to be that way. Amen. Old preacher told me one time, he said, um, Said, um, um, uh, one of the families at a church had told him, said, uh, Pastor, I need you to come pray for my son. And the man said, okay. Um, the preacher said, okay. Went down and he said, my son is doing some horrible things. He's starting doing things that he wasn't raised to do. The preacher goes down to the house. He began to pray for him. Pray that the spirit would leave the boy. Um, the, 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 evidently the spirit began to leave the boy or something and Preacher get, um, began to leave. The boy's having conversations with his father. The preacher goes back to the house, and just before he knocks on the door, um, uh, the, he overhears the boy saying, he said, now, Daddy, you, you talk about the preacher all the time like he's nothing. You put him down every chance you get. You say he's a bootleg. You say he's not real. You say you don't trust him. But when I got in trouble, you call him to come pray for me. This is what the boy told his, told his daddy. I could have been delivered a long time ago if I didn't believe in what you were saying. What, you know what the boy said? While I was at church, the word could have changed my life. But I wouldn't listen to the word. Dad, I was listening to you. And you made the word of no effect because you told me that the preacher wasn't nothing. Daddy, you said the preacher was just like you. He's just a man. 
that evidently you didn't understand spiritual things. And now when the preacher gets him in a setting, pray over him, and, and the evil spirit stops speaking for the boy, and the Holy Spirit in the boy starts speaking, the boy then talks to his daddy. Preacher say knocked on the door anyway, went on in the house. When he went on in the house, all of a sudden the boy daddy told the preacher, oh, Pastor, I'm sorry. Because I thought it was you that was destroying the boy. Never knowing the whole time it was what I was saying about you is the thing that was killing him. See, you'll make God's word ineffective because you don't like the vessel that God is sending it through. Lord, help me preach this thing today. And God will fix it where well. the only person that's able to move and be able to help in a situation or a crisis is the one you've been saying ain't got no power. There's one more thing I want you to learn from this demon, this demonic spirit. Watch, watch this. Because Jesus gets up in verse 25, casts him out. The more the evil spirit talks, he, was, he has the capacity to influence, and Jesus told him to be quiet. I don't want him to influence me. Last thing this, 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 this evil spirit teaches us is this. Third thing. Make sure you put this down. Evil spirits don't leave gracefully. Keep your Bibles open. Keep your Bibles open. Oh, you think the devil just want to leave you alone because you done met this man named Jesus? <laughs> no, that's not how he works. Mm -mm. He does know who Jesus is. And he, don't, he, does, he do know he ain't got to go home. He got to get up out of him. He knows that. But he don't want to leave until he taps some stuff up. He, 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 oh, oh, you thought just because you bumped into Jesus... That I'm just finna, I know I'm about to leave. I know because I ain't got no authority. I ain't got no power over Jesus. But before I leave, I'm going to try my best to make your life a living hell. It can't win. He knows he can't win. But, but let's see what the text says. It's, 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 it's right there in verse number 26. Keep your Bibles up so that you can read along with me so that you know I'm telling the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Watch what he says. And when the unclean spirit had torn, torn him cried out with a loud voice he had to do with Jesus he had to come out Amen. torn him with the, and with a loud voice spirit cried and came out of him isn't that interesting I'm finished my time is up I got to go watch, watch what he says he says the spirit said he it, it tore him convulsed him shaking him shaking him trying to kill him but Jesus says no this evil spirit don't want to leave the child, don't want to leave the family, don't want to leave the church. Don't want to, it's going to try to tear it up before it goes. And it's shaking this man, trying to kill him. But Jesus says, no, no, come up out of there. Come up out of him. Yeah. See, you can't shout because you don't believe in spirits. But the spirit, when it comes to Jesus, has to obey Jesus' authority. <laughs> Had to come up out of him. And so before we begin to over-medicate our children and do all this other stuff, sometimes you just need to have them in church. Sometimes you stop being friends and tell that boy, get that gun out of that house, get them drugs out from under that bed, stop trying to be friends and be fa a famous mama and daddy, and tell that boy, look, if you don't get yourself together, it's going to be me and you out there in that backyard. Now, you may whip me, but I'm going to keep on whipping you because I love you enough not to let you go out in this world and become who, who God didn't call you to be. Now, do you want to be, do you want to have fame or do you want to have ministry? Ministry means you better, you got to get your hands dirty. Don't be getting on these committees if you ain't trying to do no work. Because committees is not ministry. You, real ministry is your hand touching someone else's shoulders. Your hands on someone else's back encouraging and pushing them to do better. That's what real ministry is. When someone is on drugs, talking to them, letting them know that Jesus can make a way out of no way. Do you want to do real ministry or do you want to be just a famous church on the corner? And Jesus is saying, do real ministry. 
do real ministry. Watch, watch what he's saying. I'm out of here. Threw him on the ground. Threw him in the floor of the church. Shook him just as how he's in convulsion. Now something is coming up out of his mouth. Now he's about to bite his tongue. Now just he's, he's shaking. He's convulsing because Jesus has said, come up out of him. Now he's, he has to come. He has to submit because he was obligated to not be inside of this man anymore. He had no choice. This evil spirit had to come out. This evil spirit had to come out not because of land of hands, not because of oil, not because of the, some the preaching and teaching of the gospel Amen. brought this man out. The, Satan is on a temporary assignment to stop a permanent promotion here at this church, at your house, in your life. It's temporary. He's on a temporary assignment. Why does Jesus bother? Why does Jesus bother to make this evil spirit come out of this man? Because Jesus wants to set this man free from this. He also wants to set us free. No doubt in my mind, knowing this, if Jesus freed this evil spirit, this man's life is destined for greatness. But he can't do it when he's tied down by this evil spirit, this unclean spirit. And beloved, let me tell you something else before I leave. My time is up. An unclean spirit and the Holy Spirit can't reside in the same house. I'm finished. Can't reside in the same house. Verse 28 says, and I'm finished. Verse 28 says like this. And immediately, watch what it says, verse 28. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the regions around Galilee. Did he do it for the fame? Did he do it for ministry? This man's life was not so that Jesus can become famous. His fame grew. That was not because he wanted it to. This is during the messianic secret time when Jesus didn't even want anybody to know. But he saw someone hurt and he moved. Because ministry was more important than fame. And he moved. So I'm asking you today. Next question is. What are you in it for? What are you in it for? No, no, no. I'm going to pause just for a few minutes. We out of here. What are you in it for? To be a famous church? Or a church that's about real ministry? Some people get off on that, don't they? Oh, we do this down over there. We do this over there. We do this over there. And we do that over there. And we do this over there. And church can brag about how busy they are. But are you doing real ministry? You're doing real ministry. Because the fact of the matter is, people in the world don't fuss as much as we do in here. No, no. Are we in it for fame? Do, do, are, we, are we a famous church or are we an effective church? I know, I know when I'm pre I know this 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 messing with the sensibility of most people because we are the historical. But what will history read when Jesus reads our book? Come here, I know your works. I know your works. I'm in Revelation. I know your works. I know you got a good heart. I know you mean well. But I still got something with you. Got an issue with you. You, be let, you, you. you let the past overwhelm your future. To the point that you thought that what you have done became a representation of me. And I allow some things to happen through you. But you cannot be a monument. You now have to be a movement. That's okay. You, you don't have to clap. I'm just telling what the Lord said. I'm not trying to be famous. I just want to do ministry. Amen. I know this type of preaching don't get you to shout and get you to thinking. You ain't got to think like me, but at least think today. What are we really doing? 
Are we really focused on ministry? I hear you. You, you, you want to be braggadocious? Yeah, you just don't know. We, 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 we. But, but really, when Jesus looks at us, what does Jesus say? Communicate, the community tell you about our church. I don't want to know what the community say. I want to know what Jesus is saying now. What is Jesus saying? Because that's, that's the question. Once you got your pat on the back, and the Bible said you got your reward. I don't want my reward to come from the community. I don't want my reward to come from what people say. I want my reward to be serving. Oh, serve. Service render aid and attention. Servants don't mind getting their hands dirty. Servants don't mind brushing up against someone that don't look like me. Yeah. Servant means I'm going to hear from my hear from the leadership of the Lord and I'm going to go out and do the work of the Lord. Amen. That's what that means. Do you want to be famous or do you want to do ministry? That's not the question of the pastor. That's the question of the Lord today. That's the question of the Lord. I don't want us to grow. Is this your church or is this his church? Hmm. What, is, what is real ministry then? What the, I, I didn't think about that. Real ministry is when you go when you, where you don't want to go, when you do what you don't want to do, when you affect people that you didn't even think about. Not just, not just poor people. There's a lot of people that don't really know the Lord. Who will I bump into tomorrow at work? Who will I bump into at the store? Who will I bump into? Or am I afraid to really do real ministry? I leave that to the preacher. Start preaching in your houses. Start preaching to your children. Start preaching in your community when you bump into somebody. And what I mean by preaching is, do it by not picking up your Bible. Do it by, through the love of your heart. That you may let what's in your heart go out to somebody else. People don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. 